Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the image plane node in DaVinci Resolve, the Fusion section of DaVinci Resolve. Let's get to it. Pulling the Fusion component to the timeline, pull the playhead on it and open the Fusion page. Right. Pulling the image plane from the 3D tools or press shift space bar to pull it in or Another way you can go to tools on the 3D search for image plane and pull that in. Let's delete that. Let's pull that into the viewer, see how it works. The green input on the image plane takes in 2D information or 3D information. Let's pull in a footage and that's actually an image. Let's pull it in and connect that to the green input. Now, See it in 3D space. The yellow input can only take a 3D mesh or 3D input. If we put in the text node and just type text effects, I want to show you something and connect that to the image plane. The image plane adapts its sizing to the image itself, to the text input. We move around the text, it's just a flat thing on a flat plane, which is cool. To further accentuate what I'm trying to say, let's um Let's move the text effect down. Let's bring in a rectangle mask node, connect that to the mask input of the text effect. Let's reduce the height of this rectangle mask, something like that. And let's uh, move around. You see the image plane has adjusted this accordingly. So I had to show you how that works. Now let's bring in a particle emitter and particle renderer node, connect that up. Under particle emitter, let's go to region increase the size of the region, then connect that to the yellow input of the image plane. Okay. Then if you pull that into the viewer, let's click outside of the, yeah. So we see this, see particles around the text effect. It's a nice effect. If you want something like this, just wanted to show you how that works. Let's disconnect all that. Bring back the media in and connect it to the image plane. Zoom out a little. Now let's um, check out the image plane. We see 10 subdivisions, right? Let's take wireframe. We see that 10 subdivisions lengthwise and heightwise. And that's how subdivisions work. To further show how this works, let's bring in a bender node, bender 3D node. Add that, pull that into the viewer. Let's uh, make a few adjustments here and there to bend it. Yeah. Now let's zoom in to the edges of that. You see that jagged thing? If you want to smoothen it out, you go to image plane, increase subdivisions. You see it's now smoother. That's how subdivisions work, depending on what you want to do, right? Um, now let's delete the bender 3D node. Zoom out a little. Now let's go to visibility. You can take visibility or not visible. That's a no brainer. Then scene on scene by cameras. We can only show this by pulling in a merge 3D, a render 3D and pulling in a camera node. Connect that up together. Let's just the position of the camera and pull the render 3D node there. And if we go to image plane and take on scene by camera, we will not see that particular image plane in the render. All right. That's how that works. And check that. Then we can go to the render 3D. Let's make it a dual viewer. Drag a merge 3D to the left viewer. Right, and zoom it a bit, just a view. Now let's go to image plane and tick call front. To call the front, it means the front of the plane won't show, but the back of the plane will show. Same thing goes for the back. The front will show, the back will show. That's how that works. Now let's move on to lighting. We can make sure that this is affected by light or not affected by light. Now let's, to be able to show this, let's go to render 3D and um, take light and shadow. You see it's dark because we don't have any light in the scene already. So if we bring in a spotlight and connect that in, let's adjust the spotlight settings. I'm not going to make this too nice. Let's just go to controls and just make it linear just to show you that the light is shining on the image plane, right? Then if we now go to the image plane and then we tick on check affected by lights. So the regardless of what the light setting is in the 3D scene, 
the image plane will always show will show its actual color. So that's how that setting works. Same thing with all the other settings under there. That is matte. For as matte by tick is matte. You'll see it doesn't show anything. Now to be to be able to show you how this works, let's pull in another image plane node. Um, let's just set that color to that. I didn't really need to pull in a background node, but hey, that's what it is. Let's connect that to the image plane and connect that to the merge 3D. Let's increase the size of this image plane. Let's go to transform, increase the scale a wee bit, then move it back a wee bit in the Z axis. Then if we now go to this image plane now, and then we go to its mat, you'll find that the area where the image plane covers is now transparent. That's how its mat typically works, right? Um, now let's go to normals and tangents. We won't really talk much about this. And um, let's just move on. We go to materials, then you can set the color of the image plane. Let's check the second image plane we pulled in. Let's uh, set the color from white to something like yellow. So the way this works is it mixes the color with the color or that is coming in from the 2D node that is connected to it. Then you can adjust the alpha, the opacity of the material, right? Then the specular color is the color it shows when light reflects on the surface of the object. Usually I leave this at white and depends on what you want to stylistically achieve. And trust me, there's this thing called two-sided lighting. If you uncheck lighting and shadow, it will not be affected by lighting more like the setting we had at the beginning, right? And um, then if to show you how this two-sided lighting thing works, let's try a little something, right? Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. So let's pull this image to this to the left viewer. And then let's go to the transform of this image plane. Let's adjust it. You are seeing the back of the image plane in the Merge 3D view on the left view. But if we go to the Merge 3D and go to transform, right, and swivel it out the X around, you see that the back of it on the renderer 3D view is black. To correct that, we go to the image plane, go to materials, and then we take two sided. Then we can see the back of the image plane. That's how that works, right? Then we go to this transform, move left, right, up, down, in, out, we rotate it along the x axis, along the y axis, and um, along the z axis. You can also adjust the pivot. Pivot is the point at which the image plane will rotate, right? We can adjust this. And then we can rotate it and you'll see it's rotating around that point. That's how that works. Then we can also scale the image plane along the X and Y. Let's do a little example. Let's put in an image plane. Let's um, put in a triangle mask. Connect that. Let's put in a background node. Connect that to the mask input of the background node. And let's adjust the triangle. I want it to start there. So I go to the first point, 0 0.125, and then the y value to 0. The next point should be 1 minus 0 0.125, which is 0 0.875. Then the y value will still be equal to 0. And the last point should be 0 0.5, and the y value will be equal to 1. So we can pipe this in to the image plane and drag that into the right viewer. Let's close the effects tab and let's change the color. Let's uh, make it a gradient thing. And the color, a little vibrant. One of the, the something like that. Then, um, I think I like that. Now let's move on and bring in, let's, let's change the pivot of this, um, image plane. Let's move it down to the base of that 
triangle. Then we go to rotate X. So we can, we can rotate it about that pivot point. So we want it to be lying flat, then gradually tilt in to a middle point, right? So we start from 90, then move to the next keyframe. About 20 keyframes are forward, then we type minus 22.3. Then it swivels in, something like that. Now let's bring in a duplicate 3D node. Let's make it three copies. Yeah, I'm adjust some settings so that by the time it twirls like this, it forms something like a pyramid. So make this following settings. Adjust it as such. Just note the settings. I've tested it. They kind of work with this whole thing I just set up here. And if we look at it from up top, see we have like a pyramid. Right. Fantastic. Now, the next thing we do is we add another duplicate 3D node. And this time around, we make it um, five copies. Okay, so, and then we adjust the time offset to minus 6.5. Then we adjust the Y offset to 1.5. So you have that closing in. That's what we want. Then if you zoom out, you see the five copies on there. Let's add a merge 3D node and let's uh, bring in a spotlight and a camera 3D node, connect those to the merge 3D. For the spotlight, we need to rotate it so that it's facing downwards, right? So we go to the transform tab and for the X value, type 90. And we can pull it up. Let's pull it up. Let's go to controls and increase the corner and go to 90. I set the decay type to linear. Beautiful. Let's just adjust it a little bit. And then go, let's go to the camera 3D node and do the same thing. Change the angle X to 90. And then we want the camera to move from down there to the upper part. To set that, we keyframe the value, the Y value of the camera 3D. So let's set that to 0.169. Keyframe that. Then we move to frame 85 and set the keyframe here to about 8, let's say 8.25. Yeah, that's fine. And um, we can bring in a renderer 3D node, connect that to image 3D. So the position of the camera is not perfect. Go to camera 3D, adjust the Z value to something like that. Zoom it out a little to see if it's perfect. Let's position it correctly. And um, I'm not going to even do any spline thing here. I just want to show you how this works, right? So fit and let's play it. That's it. And that there is the image plane node. You can do crazy other stuff with it. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you got one or two things. And um, see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.